A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Monday, May 1st. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. A proposal to build 8 to 10 tiny houses for veterans in the city of Port Jervis is in the planning stages. Property owner Bill Weitzel of the Rumshock Foundation also plans to develop two additional buildings with four apartments and a commercial kitchen. The residences would be supportive housing for vets. Have job training and, and everything and for veterans. Um, basically to help with the veteran suicide. You know, veterans work well together, you know, and, and hopefully veterans living with veterans um, would be a solution to the, you know, the suicide problem. The Rumshock Foundation has already received a $400,000 grant from the Dormitory Authority of the State of New York. Wetzel has also applied to the federal government for $1.4 million in grants. Kingston is also working on a proposal to develop tiny homes in that city. The Monroe Village Board failed to approve the annual budget at a Friday evening meeting amid a dispute over the mayor's salary. The proposed budget included a controversial 134% salary increase for the mayor, bringing the annual salary for the position from $32,000 a year to $75,000 a year. Two trustees voted in favor of the budget, which included the salary increase. Two voted against it, creating a tie that required Mayor Neil Dwyer to vote. Dwyer chose not to cast his vote for or against the budget and recused himself. The mayor's recusal resulted in the budget failing, and consequently the tentative budget will be adopted for the upcoming fiscal year. It was in 2014 that the carcinogenic chemicals PFOS and PFOA were found in Washington Lake, the city of Newburgh's water supply. Two years later, a state of emergency was declared, and the city was connected to the New York City Catskill Aqueduct, with the state picking up the tab. The State Department of Environmental Conservation continues to pressure the federal agency to remediate the problem, which came from firefighting foam discharged at the Stewart Air National Guard base, says Sean Marr, Executive Deputy Commissioner of the DEC. Primarily, we need to see uh, a treatment system installed on Recreation Pond that will address the flow of contamination from that site. Uh, We know that DOD had put an interim system on that was not adequate for addressing that flow of contamination, and that's why we continue to press them uh, to ensure that action is undertaken and contamination is addressed. And uh, it has taken time, uh, but the state has been pressing them every step of the way. The DEC says an agreement with the DOD to also address off-site impacts of drinking water supplies in the city of Newburgh, the towns of Newburgh and New Windsor, and reduce continued threats to the environment. The race for Wallkill Town Supervisor this November will pit Democratic Councilman Neil Meyer against incumbent Republican George Serrano. Town finances are the key issue in the campaign, and Meyer suggests the current system is not working. The town is lacking in policies and procedures as well as internal controls, which have led to a very chaotic environment and a lot of waste um, in terms of taxpayer money. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars just being wasted, and we need to fix it. Meyer says the town has overpaid on its payroll hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last few years. The state controller's office continues an in-depth analysis of the town's financial operations, Serrano says any issues brought to his attention from past years are being corrected. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination, the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. Minnesink is the last town in Orange County where Republicans caucus to select candidates for the general election and two women are vying for the town supervisor's line in November. Current supervisor Ralph Ford is retiring after 10 years on the job, 
and Councilwoman Barbara Clifford and town resident Charlene Bentley will be on the May 9th party caucus seeking to win the nomination. Clifford has been a councilwoman for 10 years, previously working for the state Senate. The Ulster County Republican Party fielded only 12 candidates to run for 23 seats on the county legislature, and now two of them have been disqualified in court over petition challenges. Legislator Craig Lopez, District 14, and Jared Keplinger, a candidate for District 8, were tossed off the ballot. Lopez will be removed from the GOP and conservative lines. But County Republican Chairman Ken Ronk is banking on Lopez remaining in contention. He says they're circulating petitions for the independent line for Lopez. That Ronk did not even bother to provide legislator Lopez, his party's endorsed candidate, and a colleague in the legislature with legal counsel for the hearing speaks volumes, says County Democratic Chairwoman Kaylee McKenzie. The Newburgh Community Land Bank has been awarded $1.8 million by the Housing Trust Fund Corporation and State Homes and Community Renewal. The funding was granted after a competitive application process open to all New York State land banks as part of the Land Bank Initiative Phase 2. The nonprofit organization partners with city government to strengthen the community by acquiring, stabilizing, and facilitating the redevelopment of blighted and abandoned properties, returning them to productive use and growing local property taxes. The park and ride lot in Central Valley got a little sprucing up with the planting of a red sunset maple tree. It was in honor of Arbor Day. Lance McMillan of the State Department of Transportation noted his agency has gotten more involved in environmental issues. The Department of Transportation is doing more and more each year on our projects to remain our focus on the environment and to remember that climate change is all of our responsibilities. The DOT wants to plant a tree in each of its 31 park and ride facilities in the Hudson Valley over the next four years. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.